way I don't hear a word you say It happens every single day Well, you're telling everyone about me I'm so tired I wanna get to sleep tonight I'm not saying it's all a lie I just wanna make it out alive You're always a victim I'm always a circumstance You want me to believe I'm a man in the paper So I'm telling everybody Telling everybody They 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 don't give they don't know a thing about there there ain't nothing good about me yeah most nights i stay up thinking then i stop believing all the things you say about me i know it ain't easy on you too we gotta set ourselves free So one of the most important, I guess, factors when it comes to songwriting is a melody. It's, in fact, one of the most important ingredients um, in any form of music composition because the melody is what attaches us to a piece of music. And you've got to think about why we're attached to a piece of music. Why is the melody so important? Well, the melody is a motif and it's something that repeats. So... I guess for contemporary songwriting, and that's really what we're talking about, we want a melody that's just going to hook people in. It's going to stick in their heads. Like the most popular songs are often the most annoying because we hear them the most, but they're like earworms that are just always inside our head. So one of the most important factors when it comes to a melody, which of course is one of the most important factors in composition, is are you going to be able to sing along with it? So you need to, I guess... Stop and take stock before you write a song. Why are you writing a song? Are you writing a song because you want everyone out there in the world to sing along with you? In which case, well, then you're going to need these two things. Repetition, so it's going to need to repeat. And you're going to need a little bit of contrast in between the sections in your song. And that's true for all, I guess, the whole music production. But it's especially true when it comes to the melody. The song a time in our life we all have pain we all have sorrow but if we are wise we know that there's always tomorrow lean on me we're all not strong and i'll be your friend i'll help you Carry on for it won't be long till I'm gonna need One of the most important components in a melody is repetition. Are you gonna remember my song? When we're thinking about constructing a melody, we need to think about a melody in terms of phrases because we're telling a message and phrases are musical sentences. So like lean on me for for example, sometimes in your life stop. We all have pain. We all have sorrow. Three sentences that we can all relate to. We can understand it because the words are emotive. So the words are pulling us in. But this melody is repetitive. Some time in our life, we all have pain. We all have sorrow. What does it do then? Bang. You hear that three times and you're singing it. You're singing it every time you hear it. Does anyone not sing along to Lean On Me? So there is a good example of a well-constructed melody. It's repetitive. It's going to stick in your head. You're going to remember it. So think about that. If your main aim is to get everyone out there on the YouTubes or in the world or wherever it may be singing your music, then think about these phrases. Think about these musical building blocks or these, I guess, melody building blocks. So... Think about how phrase one might cement something. Phrase two, maybe it goes somewhere else. Or phrase three comes back to that first motif and repeats it. So repetition is something that's really important. Does my melody repeat enough? Another thing in terms of melody is contrast. So 
when we look at song construction, we've got that verse, do 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 chorus. Lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend. It's different. And it's different because the verse is starting down low. Time in our life. Do, 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 do. Starting low, it's going up. It's coming back down again. What's the chorus doing? Do, do, do. It's coming down. Ba, do, 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 do. Up. Do, 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 do. So that's another really important thing when it comes to melody. Is there contrast between my verse and my chorus? And our verse is where we're laying the foundation for our song. We're telling people what the song's about. The chorus is where we're ramming home our message. So think about how we can contrast that melody between verse and chorus. And once again, think about how often you're doing the same things with your melody. How often are you repeating yourself? And I mean repeating yourself in your first song, in your second song, in your third song, in your fourth song. How often are your melodies almost exactly the same in every song that you write? So that's where we need to start thinking about how we can break our melodies up. How can we make it different so that we get a body of work that doesn't just represent one dimension in terms of our songwriting? Another thing when it comes to melody is letting a melody breathe. When you're speaking to someone, you're not going to get very fast if you don't take a breath in between and you don't give them time to stop and I guess listen to what you're saying and and not just listen to what you're saying but take stock of what you're saying especially if it's something important like this is a melody we've got three and a half minutes to get our message across to the world it's pretty important we need to give it some space so lean on me some time in our life space we all have pain space we all have sorrow space and that space is like oh it's awesome it's it's the songs breathing and also it gives our production time to actually come up and support the melody so that's something we're going to look at in the next video so let the melody breathe and of course like i said contrast your sections so contrast your verse to your chorus and your verse and chorus to your bridge another really important thing when it comes to a melody is timing so is my timing accessible? Is it something that you can sing really easily? Like Lean On Me is perfect. Uh, da, do, do, do. Uh, da, 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 da. So easy. It's not bebop jazz. It's not prog rock. Um, so once again, it comes back to why are you writing this song? If you want people to sing along with it, then all of these concepts that I'm talking about are really important. If you're a great singer and you're a great singer-songwriter or you're in a prog metal band or a jazz band or something like that, then, of course, you can, you can. Know, I'm not going to tell you how to construct your own melody. Right here, though, the main aim is getting as many people singing along. So we need to actually think about our timing and we need to break it down so that it's accessible to people that maybe don't have any musical knowledge. So people will sing along uh, with the melody if they can buy into the emotion, if they can buy into the timing, and if it's repetitive so they can latch onto it. And, and remember it. We've talked about repetition. Now let's talk about contrast a little bit more. We've talked about contrast between verse and chorus, but what are some ways that we can actually contrast our verse melody from our chorus melody? Well, like I said before, you know, songs or sentences, music sentences need to breathe. Our melody needs room to breathe. So what we can do is change the note length up in between the verse and the chorus. So even with Lean On Me, do 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 there's a few short notes in there. Um, Lean on me where you're not strong. I'll be your friend. So it's more sustained. It's got more of this sort of, I guess, flow to it in the chorus. The verse has more space. So think about how you can vary the verse and chorus. And that gives us contrast. Once again, make sure the verse and the chorus have that same amount of repetition inside their individual sections. But try and make them contrast. Another thing we can do is split up the range of the vocals. So, or the range of the melody. So Lean On Me is again another great example. It's down here, the verse. Time in our life, we all have pain, we all have sorrow. And... I mean, you don't need to be a great singer to worry about splitting the range. You just need to make sure it's within your vocal range if you're going to sing it. So that's another really key ingredient. But we'll cover that in terms of like recording vocals. But Lean On Me starts down here. 
And then it moves up an octave. Lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend. So it gives this lifting experience. It's substantial. It's a substantial change in, in the vocal range and in the melody range. So that's another thing that we can do. We can change between registers. Another good tactic is things like timing between the verse and chorus. So timing differences. So we've already spoken about how you can lengthen or shorten phrases, but things like pushing an introduction. Um, Some time in your life we all have friends. Two, three, lean on me. Where you're not strong. So the verse is coming in on one, two, three, four. Some time in our life. Even though I just missed one and I was late, but you get the point. And then the chorus is one, two, three, lean on me. There's one there. So it's a great way to break up the introduction to a phrase. So have the verse pushed, have the chorus straight, or have the verse on the beat and have the chorus pushed. In this video series, we're working on one of my songs. It's a four chord song, really simple vocals, and I've made it simple for kind of demonstration purposes. But I don't consider myself to be a great singer. Like, I, you know, I really don't like my own voice. <laughs> I'm guessing that there's a lot of people out there that are the same. But one point I really want to ram home here is that we can all sing. It's, it's practice. It's doing it over and over again. Like repetition with songwriting. It's not just repetition in terms of melody. It's doing things on a daily basis. It's finding time to actually sit down and make time to sing, make time to songwrite. And in terms of vocals, look, we don't all have amazing voices, but don't let that bother you because it's the emotion. It's, it's the emotive message that you're getting across to your listener. And if you've got any doubts or, you know, if you're... If you're worried about being a perfectionist, just think of, you know, things like Counting Crows, you know, Mr. Jones. He's not a, he's not the greatest singer in the world, but he, he portrays a message, which when, you know, a whole lot of people at the time heard it and went, yep, that's cool. I can relate to that. Um, and there was something about the actual quality and the tone in his voice, you know, things like Passenger. When it starts to snow, da -da -do 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 -do. really strong melody, but also a voice which is not overly powerful. You know, it's a voice which is gentle. It's it's making you think about the lyrics. Um, you know, even from an old school point of view, does Van Morrison have? You know, is he the greatest vocalist? I don't know, but I, he can tell a story. And he can tell a story that we're going to listen to. And he's, he can tell a story that people are going to be singing at weddings for, you know, the next hundred years or, you know, singing it at pubs in the pub choir. So don't worry necessarily about your voice. Practice will sort that out. Hey, thanks for taking the time to stop by and check out this video. Give us the thumbs up if you've learned something. And of course, subscribe to the Cubase YouTube channel for plenty more videos just like this. I'll see you there.